Um, straight to uh, the debates. You know, I wonder, the two of you, uh, do you think Robert Blacklock, the man that asked that question, speaks for the black stock, excuse me, speaks for the entire nation, that this is an election of a rock between uh, people decide between a rock and a hard place. People are is not meant to. Is this the best? Is this we can really do? the best that people could do? I think there is a lot of disillusionment about politics at the moment. I mean, I've been out door knocking, and definitely people feel a real sense of frustration with all politics. And I think they look at everything that's happened over the 14 years, they look at how their lives have deteriorated, and they look at a lot of the scandals in politics as well. And I think they have a very dim view of all politicians. But a lot of the people I've spoken to on the doorstep as well do want to take a chance on change. And I think I understand the frustration that that gentleman expressed. I do also think... I don't think... I'd like to know who he thought was would have been the kind of ca the politicians of our era, not just random people, because I know Martin Lewis is always the person that, ever, and <laughs> rightly so, he's great. But he's is that right. Yeah, Martin Lewis is incredibly but popular, want Lewis to but be he's not standing oh, as, yeah. a, as a yeah. candidate. Definitely chancellor as well. But I just think, personally, I mean, I'm, and obviously I've got my uh, biases, but I do think, I think Keir Starmer is not the same as the Prime Minister's. I think Liz Truss crashed the economy. I don't think anyone... I don't even think Rishi Sunak's like Liz, Liz Truss. Boris Johnson was a liar and a charlatan and really brought politics into yeah. disrepute. So I don't think it's quite fair to say that everybody it's is not, the it same. Wasn't, it wasn't a fair question. I mean, we worry, don't we, on this panel, that the viewers are looking and saying, is this the best Good Morning Britain can do for a political panel? But we live with it. But, you know, Keir Starmer's <laughs> a very distinguished lawyer, ran the director of, was the director of public prosecutions. Rishi Sunak uh, was a successful businessman. I know his career is somewhat controversial, but so they're... Pretty good people. I mean, you know, we can look over at uh, the United States and think, you know, we've not done but that badly. We can look over at France and think things are going. There must be something in the selling of it that it that there is that that, that neither seems inspiring. Obviously, I, no, I you think... would say that that's unfair and maybe unfair on both of them. I think there's so much going on in this election that is very frustrating. Uh, the the two leading people are very cautious. The Labour, in particular, don't want to say anything. They cliche about carrying the Ming vase mm. across the polished mm. floor, not wanting to drop it. It's been, uh, the vacuum's been filled by opinion polls. It's been, uh, what, more than 100 opinion polls. All we're speculating on at the moment is the size of the Labour majority. There are huge issues facing the country, not least the state of our economy, which the leading politicians simply won't confront, because, to be honest, they don't really have any answers. There's no quick fix. OK, well, let's look at the performances, then. The snap poll from those there, that YouGov had a snap poll, and the reaction was that it was 50-50, no outright winner. Um, Keir Starmer did score higher at being trustworthy, likeable and in touch, and actually prime ministerial. But Rishi Sunak has done very badly in the snap poll reactions, and so far he has oh, done very badly. Uh, this was yeah. the best yeah, yeah. to come 50-50 yeah, was, yeah, yeah. was the best he's done from, from these debates. So was that a good performance, did you think? Uh, I thought it was a good performance, and I think that he did do much, much better than he has done in previous Where, how uh, debates. How did he land his flows, in your view? Well, he was energetic and he came, came back to his lines. He got, I was thinking again, look at your Vox Pop and so on, that the messages that the Tories want to get out, and given mm. that, you know, most people expect a particular election result, is, you know, don't give Labour a massive majority, and Keir Starmer doesn't have any answers. He's talking about the problems but not the answers. And those messages seem to get through to your people's panel as well. So he landed those blows. So maybe, I don't know how much, you know, how much... 20% of the public have already voted through postal votes, for example. Okay. Is it really going to move the dial, this debate? Probably not. But if he had done very badly, it would have carried on the vicious circle of the Tories in a sort of spiral of decline. The, the repeated phrase which seemed to land was the idea, do not surrender Britain to Labour. There's something about the word surrender which makes it, you know, do not do not give in, you know, let us keep going, all those other things, but surrender seemed a very emotive word to use. Front page of The Express has picked up on the nine times uh, that Starmer has failed to give an answer on the boat's crisis. Was that the point where you think he seemed a little rattled, Aisha? So, I mean, I think... Sunak, you know, to be objective from a kind of debating point of view, I think Sunak did put in a pretty feisty, fiery performance. He came, you know, in swinging. It reminded me of his debates against Liz Truss during the leadership yeah. contest, mm -hmm. where he was actually very punchy, but it wasn't enough to get him over the line. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the same 
with, with this. And I thought one of the things that was interesting about Sunak is his team had clearly, you know, he'd done a lot of work with his team in terms of key messages to land. Well, apparently the they, word, he was rehearsed for four hours. Which, which, is, which is what before. people do, which is what people do. And, mm. you know, when I was prepping leaders, you know, you, you carve out a, a big chunk of time. Surrender's a really emotive word. It's mm. got particular connotations of the war and military. Mm. There's a kind of, a, and Ed will remember this, there's a sort of cheese-eating surrender monkey <laughs> kind of, you know, sort of phrase from back in the day which the right will, will remember. Cheese-eating che surrender cheese monkey. Eating surrender it was about monkey. the French about over the war in yeah. Iran. Yeah, it, it was, it was a very right. anti sort of French <laughs> kind of thing. So it's, it's, okay. it's evocative of that type of thing. Okay. The other line that Sunak said, which was interesting, is like, this is about the future. And he was, you know, saying to Starmer, this is about the future, you're going yeah. to have an answer. The, that is true to some extent. But this election is also about the 14 years that have just gone. Mm. This election is also about the record of what this government has delivered. And for most people watching at home, it's more taxes, it's a squeeze on living standards, and it's really bad public services. Mm. So that sort of, I think that's the problem that I think the, the question that came from, how are you going to break the gangs? The line from Labour has been for Keir Starmer is, is that's the way to tackle it, to break the gangs. Why isn't there a clear answer to that? Because this is really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be absolutely wrong, and I'd be lying if I said to you today, do you know what, it's really, really easy to fix this. It's an incredibly difficult problem. And this is an issue, my, the issue of migration, because of war, conflict, climate change, all across the world is going to be a big issue. But I think the one thing that you have to look at is what have both parties put forward over this period of time? I don't think Labour is saying that they've, they, it's an easy problem to solve. They have got plans. They're going to hire, for example, many, many more extra people. The border force has been hollowed out over the last 14 years. You already sound and like a government the minister, other Alicia. thing is... You're going to be good. This Rwanda scheme right. <laughs> is an absolute kind of white elephant in all of this I, as well. I, I think um, people listening to you think... Oh. That's a clear, uh, honest yeah. concession. Uh, that's an answer. I um, have done my best. I've read uh, Labour's immigration policy. I don't understand it. We've got a Rwanda policy that lots of people uh, may think uh, is a bad idea. Um, it's, it's also very, illegal it's and it's also a likely, and very expensive. Un well, it's unlikely but to be clear. upheld in the courts, it's but it's clear. clear there's an idea. What's Labour's policy other than um, funding the border force more? But that is really important. And you also have to clear the backlog system. It takes such a long time to get your asylum and immigration claim processed in this country that people end up languishing for years in the system, not working. The public has to foot the bill for these hotels. And the other thing is to do better international cooperation to try and get some of these return agreements. Well, how would you return them if people are coming from places like Afghanistan, we're signatories to the European Convention on Human Rights, you can't send them back, so how does that work? Well, you have to assess their claims, as you know, Rob. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, I'm not saying there's a magic solution to this and everything's going to be easy, but if you look at the figures, if you look at where immigration was under the last Labour government and you look at where illegal immigration is now, the figures do speak for themselves. But I do say this caveat, this is not an easy problem to solve. Mm. This is a problem that countries all over the world are facing huge pressures on. You look at what's happening in Italy, you look at what's happening in Greece. But the way to solve this is for calmness, not weird gimmicks like the Rwanda scheme, which is costing, by the way, billions mm. and billions. The only people that are benefiting, by the way, is the Rwandan government who's getting loads of British taxpayers' money. You need to have a sensible situation and you need to have a lot of international cooperation and you also need to have well-staffed borders. I mean, the trouble with this whole debate is that there is no transparency about it because the politicians won't talk about it. So, for example, this year, for example, I gather that most of the uh, illegal boat crossings are Vietnamese people coming over to uh, enter the British economy, as it were. Uh, what is our engagement with the Vietnamese government on this issue? You know, it seems to me perfectly legitimate. Vietnam it has a, a legitimate government. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's got a communist government, but it's not a kind of oppressive country. Uh, why can we not take people who come from Vietnam mm -hmm. and send them back to Vietnam? The Conservative argument would be, unless you have a, the ultimate deterrent, that people will be removed from the country and taken to Rwanda, that people will still be encouraged to go. But we don't have... A, you know, it worked with Albanian people mm. coming over on the mm. boats. Yeah. We did a deal with Albania. We reduced the numbers by 90%. International cooperation well, works, but we um, need to be transparent about it. It just doesn't feel like it's at all authentic. I mean, one of the things you have to do is fund the court system, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to stop this backlog. 
Uh, there doesn't appear to be any promise about that. No, they have, they have, and they have put stuff in their manifesto. Well, about one of the that, things actually, I have to yeah. ask you is that uh, you'll know that Keir Starmer said, um, amongst the backlog, we have to stop people coming from these countries or send them back quicker. Um, for example, in a Sun interview, people from uh, Bangladesh. Bangladesh isn't even in the top five mm. of countries of uh, people who come. Oh, excuse me, from people who come from that part of the world, and you know. A, a Labour really prospective upset. candidate, cool. Apsana Begum, says, well, that's just nothing more than a dog whistle, mm -hmm. right, so, to people who don't like uh, uh, people of colour. I think those comments have been um, misconstrued. He was not saying, in terms of taking people back to Bangladesh, he was using that as an example. That's my understanding from mm -hmm. reading the full press report. Why did he do that? I, oh. don't, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think he was basically being asked about countries that, mm. you know, you could do a, a returns uh, agreement with, perhaps he should have said Vietnam, but I think in his own constituency, some prominent members of the Bangladeshi community have come out and said this is not fair about Oh, no, his, they're very, about, very upset about it. But they have come out and a lot of people have come out and defended him as well and said he is not meaning those comments to be taken in that way. Mm. Mm. OK, all but right. Look, I think the important thing is the conversations about immigration are really difficult, yeah. OK? The, and I say this as the child of an immigrant, who, by the way, gets a lot of racist abuse and I get told to get go back to where I come from all the time. I've just came back to Glasgow, so that's <laughs> basically where I am, actually, from people. <laughs> so if you're going to send me racist abuse, get it accurate. This is a very difficult, emotive subject. And we all have to be honest, there are no easy, quick mm. fixes to this. You have to do it methodically, you have to work with other countries, but the big thing is you have to get a system which is firm and fair mm. and fast. Can we talk about the betting scandal, which seemed to be uh, uh, the, the issue that, that riled Rishi Sunak? In some ways, he got his most feisty, as he said, I'm angry about it, I'm furious about it, I know you are too. But, but uh, you know, now Sir Philip Davis, you're laughing at it, probably laughing. because it seems extraordinary. Uh, <laughs> married to Esther McVeigh as well, who, who we know. Um, she, he put £8,000 uh, bet on that he would lose his seat. And if what you read in The Sun is true, he's not denied doing this. He's said it's nobody's business and it's not illegal. It doesn't really help Rishi Sunak trying to draw a line between himself and, for instance, some of the, the, the shocking sense of distrust and... He's no, look, trying the, to draw a line between the story, himself and the story, Boris Johnson. The story now has and its more, own... And more staff are coming out. The story now has its own momentum. And there, you, I think you have to divide it in two. There's the kind of insider trading aspect. If you're sitting in a room in Downing Street mm. and the Prime Minister says, right, I've decided it's going to be July the 4th, and he says this two days before he calls the election, and you nip down the bookies and you put a bet on a July the 4th election knowing it's an absolute slam dunk... That is arguably insider trading and arguably illegal. But it is possible for politicians to bet based on their own but knowledge you're about what is... But the country Wait, to bet oh. on your party <laughs> and you place a bet Precisely. that you're going to leave. You know, you're asking people to bet their ability to pay their mortgages, to have health care when they need it, on the, well, you can, on the you people can take in a, you government. Can take a kind and people of, uh, in the government are placing bets against it. You can take, take a kind of etiquette view on whether Philip Davis... Was, it's appropriate for Philip... Philip Davis, by the way, was a bookmaker and he likes to bet. Uh, that, you know, you could take an etiquette view on whether it was uh, right for him to bet etiquette. on his own... It's not uh, etiquette. Demise, I think it's but there about is a tradition of people betting on, on election results, and I don't see anything wrong with Philip Davis putting down that come bet. On, it's eccentric and quirky. Life. Who's oh, thinking public office betting Look, against he's himself? Are you saying that no one in politics ever. should ever bet? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying should a bet week on politics. before an election. Why should, not? I bet, bet on the Scottish you, referendum. You is that, is be, that a crime? I don't think, as a politician, you should be betting on politics. Why? Because I'm not I think saying that's totally I think you nonsensical. Be, because you will be privy to inside I'm not. information. I saw a poll that said Scotland was going to vote for independence. I didn't think they would, so I went and bet it on that Scotland would vote against... You're, you're, I, you're what insight knowledge you're, did I have? You go to, you go, you're privy 
to privy very to classified what? information. No, I wasn't privy to any were you, classified you, were you, information were you again, you're a at all. You're a politician. I wasn't it's not a question privy of to any etiquette. classified it's information. It's a question of the smell test. And right now, the public are like, past the gas mask. This does not look good. Oh, my also, God. I, I mean, we had a Labour that, candidate that, betting yeah, on the election result. There'll probably be lots of Labour politicians okay. betting on the election okay. result. Ed, Are you, you saying that you... I can't bet on whether Sorry, who's going to win the next election? I don't think you... I think, yeah. as a member of the House of Lords, as I am now, I don't think we should be betting on politics. Oh, that's crazy. Have you put a bet on? No. <laughs> Oh, okay. Thank God. So when you, oh, thank when, God I have not Ed, bet. When you on placed this that bet yeah. on this, a Scottish referendum, were you against the idea of Scotland being independent? Uh, well, it's a whole separate debate. I'm slightly agnostic, no, no, actually. Reason... Finally, enough, I've got quite a lot of time for Scotland campaign? being independent. Did you go campaign? Did you go no. into... So you didn't even put a shift in for what you believed the... in. <laughs> he was so lazy, he didn't even go and... He did the bet, but didn't even go into any campaigning. So I'm lazy. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, OK. Apart from you personally, Ed, I think the principle is, although Aisha's got an issue with you personally... Um, I don't, but, I'm very fond of it. In, well, not generally, but in terms of placing bet. <laughs> I think there's a principle, isn't it, there, where you're standing up in front of a country and saying to people, give us your one vote, that's all you've got. Give us your one vote, and then you yourself who's an MP in that constituency... But lots of people, do it, for, lots of people do it for superstitious reasons. You might ah, be thinking that you, are, that, you are going to you are going to win your seat, uh, but you're superstitious, you kind of have a tradition, I'm going to bet against myself, no. uh, and if, if for some amazing quirk I lose my seat, I can buy myself a pint, having put no. a tenner on myself to lose. I don't see any problem with I that. I don't think it's about etiquette. It's not about superstition. It should be pretty obvious to people that if you are heavily involved mm. in a very important area like politics, which is not just yeah. a nine-to-five, it's a vocation, yeah. it's your entire life. And you it should not be better. It politics. wasn't a tenner, it was £8,000. I mean, £8,000 is what a lot of people have to live on. Right. You well, know, another, and you're a, asking them to place you, the vote to him. Look, Philip, clearly Philip Davis's constituents will take a view on what they think uh, yes. of what Philip Davis has done. But are you saying that it, what he's done is illegal? I don't think that's well, illegal. No, but the no, other I'm thing not is, saying I think it's the other thing which breeds into this kind of real distaste about politics. Okay. If Philip Dave, if, if he doesn't think he's yeah. good enough or not going to win, he shouldn't be standing at the general election. You know, he should make way for a candidate who, who is going to I give it their own. I think you're getting quite po-faced about I'm this, Aisha. No, quite precious about, about it. It's not kind of punching it's, the bruise it here. It is. Are you really saying corruption. that over the last 20 years, not a single Labour candidate has ever bet against themselves in And I think that's wrong. And I'm making it really clear. I think that is wrong. If you're going in to win a general election, you should give it your all because mm. you want to be the I'm candidate. I'm sure Philip Davis is giving it his no, all. No, he's not. He's he betted against himself. Yeah, and then if he, by some miracle, wins his seat, he'll say, as he did in 2005, apparently, he bet against himself, he'll say, well, that's money down the drain, but I much prefer the fact that I'm still an MP. Right. Okay, because well, he look... walks away with um, £35,000. What look is that for, mm. for politicians <laughs> or politics? I mean, Just it's, to say, it's if, they're, if, he, uh, if people are thinking of casting their vote in that constituency, the spirit of fairness, yes. we need to list all the other candidates oh, sorry, available. Yeah. Uh, in the ship, and they're old. Today. There they all are. <laughs> uh, so Philip Davis, is I don't know their old set, no. <laughs> or indeed how much people may or may not have bet on it, other than the person we've been talking about. But um, goodness me. Uh, well, there you go. Yeah. You two are feisty this you are morning. Sorry. No, You're like Kieran well, Rishi last night. I love it. So we agree on Did... quite a lot of things. We just disagree on. I just don't think you should be corrupt in politics. No, I don't think it's still corrupt. to come, everybody. I think um... it is. <laughs>